Hello and welcome to today's episode of Hollick Kenyon Sciences. Viruses, living or not. This is going to cover standard C2, which is the second standard in our third unit. And in this standard, you need to be able to identify the criteria needed to classify an organism as living. And you also need to be able to describe the basic structure of a virus and be able to explain how they reproduce using host cells. So, in today's lesson, we're going to be talking about the differences between living organisms versus what we consider to be non-living. So we're going to go through some criteria that we can use to classify those organisms. Then we're going to be giving you some vocabulary um, around the topic of viruses. And next we're going to move into the structure of a virus. And finally we're going to be talking about viral reproduction. All right, so let's move on. Now, the debate on living versus non-living. So, under common definition, living organisms must meet all of the following criteria to be considered alive. And these criteria are that a living organism must be made of cells. So, this is based off of the cell theory, which says that all living things are made of cells. Living organisms must be able to reproduce independently, so that is, they can reproduce on their own without the help of another organism. And they need to be able to respond to their environment. Um, they also need to be metabolically active, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means exactly. And eventually, all living organisms will die, so they have a finite lifespan. So let's go into this first criteria here, that is, all living organisms are made of cells. So in this example that I have here, we have a animal, which is this insect here, and we have a plant, which it is sitting on here, so it's this flower. And as you know, uh, both animals and plants are made of cells. So here we have an animal cell down here, and this animal cell is a membrane-bound sac, essentially. So we have a cell membrane, which is here, and all, cell, sorry, all cells are contained by some kind of membrane. So in the plant cell, we also have the cell membrane here, and in plants, we also have this additional structure called the cell wall. And the cell wall just kind of adds some rigidity and extra structural support to that specific cell. But essentially, all living organisms must be composed of cells. So let's look at the next one, which is that all living organisms must be able to reproduce independently. So what exactly does this mean? Well, if we look at this example here, we have a bacteria cell. So it's one of the simplest single-celled organisms on the planet. But this single-celled organism is capable of reproducing independently on its own. So What's going on here is we have the chromosome here, or the, the plasmid of DNA, and this DNA is being replicated, so we're getting it being copied. This is going to progress through cell division, so these cells are going to be splitting apart, and we're going to eventually get two daughter cells being formed. And this is a type of asexual reproduction. But we've also talked a bit previously about sexual reproduction. And sexual reproduction um, results in more diversity in the offspring being produced, whereas asexual reproduction basically results in a clone of the original parent cell being produced. All right, now the next part is that organisms need to respond to their environment. So what exactly does this mean? Well, if we take this frog as an example here, and my picture has frozen a little bit, but we have this frog here, and it is responding to its environment. So it's able to move around its environment. If something was to disturb this water here, it would then be able to uh, respond to that change in its environment. Now, when you think of something, an organism responding to its environment, personally, I always kind of think of animals, but 
Plants, fungi, and other things like bacteria can also respond to their environment. So if we take this plant, for example, um, if an insect was, for example, to come in, and we have an insect here, I'm just going to do a quick little drawing, and if this insect was to attack this plant leaf, um, this plant would actually be able to respond to that attack and defend itself. And plants can actually release chemicals, uh, defensive chemicals, to ward off attacks by insects. So this plant is actually able to defend itself as well. So now let's go to the next criteria, which is that all or living organisms must be metabolically active. So what does that mean exactly? So metabolism really is just being able to um, take one kind of nutrient source or energy source and transform it and use it in a way that energy is being transferred to complete different processes in an organism's life. So in this plant, we have uh, water and we have carbon dioxide being taken up. And through the process of photosynthesis, plants are able to take inorganic nutrients like carbon dioxide and water and transform them into oxygen, but also importantly, they're harnessing energy through this reaction. And this is a process of metabolism. So um, all organisms must be able to have met metabolic processes of some kind. Now, animals, for example, do not make their own food. So they cannot just take inorganic compounds like carbon dioxide and water and just get energy from it um, just like that. Um, so those kind of organisms like animals need to eat other organic materials such as plants or fungi or even other animals to get some kind of energy. But the main thing is that these organisms are taking up some kind of nutrients and they're getting some kind of energy from somewhere in their environment which is allowing them to do things like grow, to repair, to reproduce. So those things are all necessary to be considered to be a living organism. And finally, all living organisms will eventually die. So if we think of this plant here, it's going to have a lifespan of, you know, could be a few years. Some plants can live for hundreds of years. Um, whatever that lifespan is, eventually it will come to an end and that organism will be considered to be no longer reliving at some point. So that is another criteria is that all organisms will eventually die. So just a quick recap. Um, to go over some of the points we just covered, all living organisms must meet all of the following criteria. So not just one or two of them, they must meet all five of the, these criteria. So they need to be made of cells, they can reproduce independently, and this one is going to become important when we talk about viruses and whether or not viruses are alive or not. They are able to respond to their environment, they are metabolically active, and all living organisms will eventually die.